What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Wanted to make a quick video today to show you all and give a little review on the Swift Springs that I have on my car. Um, they're pretty good. I've had them for about two and a half years and 20,000 miles. So, you know, I'm holding the rear spring because I only have the um, springs on the front of my car. I opted to stay with the um, stock suspension on the back just because I wanted to um, do it for aesthetic reasons more than anything performance wise because when you put just the front springs on the car is equal um, in height in the front and back if you put these rears on they'll drop the, the back about a half inch or so then you're kind of back to um, that uh, the, the look where the, the, the rear is lower and the, the front is higher which is what I was trying to avoid in the first place so let me do a quick turnaround of this camera and show you all the measurements that these springs bring to a 2012 ISF. So in the front, you'll see that it, the car is about, let's see here. From the bottom to the top, about 26 inches. And then, the back, same thing. And from the bottom, top here, about 26 inches. So it's even on this side, and that's the look that I wanted. But then if you bring it over to this side, it goes from the bottom, the top here. You see it's about 25 and 3 fourths of an inch. And also, on the back side, bottom, top here, 25 and 3 quarters of an inch. And uh, let me explain what I've found out about that. Now, when I first saw that, I was wondering, why is this car leaning to the uh, left a little bit? Um, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't get why that's this would happen. But I did some uh, searching on Club Lexus and on on the internet, and I guess it's appropriately named the Lexus Lean. Um, a lot of cars have this issue. Didn't really find a specific as to why it happens. I don't know. Maybe it's just um, the, the uh, drivers on the on that side, and they're they're wearing the suspension out. I don't know. That's kind of just some crazy off the wall idea. But you might be able to find out a better reason as to why that happens I don't know why that's just what I that's just what I found it was kind of strange when I first found it but when I when I found out that you know other people have had that on stock suspensions aftermarket suspensions then um, I didn't worry about it too much I didn't actually notice it until I actually measured my car you know a quarter inch difference from left to right you're not gonna notice that just day to day so don't worry about that um, I guess it's normal but uh, if you want to change that, then obviously you have to get coilovers. So overall, I have liked these um, these springs. Like I said, I've had them for two and a half years and 20,000 miles. Um, Performance-wise, I, I don't think that there was any improvement or um, you know anything detrimental to the suspension after I put them on. I, I will say that the fronts, maybe I was looking for it. Um, they did seem a little bit, just a tiny bit more bouncy um, when when they, when they first went on uh, than the sock suspension that I had before, which would uh, would be normal, I guess, uh, given lowering springs and the the um, not being you know I guess equal to uh, the shock. You know, usually shocks and springs are made together, so being a lowering spring maybe puts a little bit more wear on that shock so that could be the reason for it very you know minimal um but i think I, like i said i think i was looking for it so other than that the you know i, I drove it on street uh on the canyons and uh just on the highway before and after and not too much of a difference between either of those didn't take it to the track at the time because i had to get this car um lowered when i first bought it that's one of the things that I, I think I got it lowered yet within the first month because I could not take that wheel gap on the front of this of, of the Lexus. Um, let me show you. Here are the springs. These are the stock 
front springs here. These are the rears. So they're still covered up. They still have their you know, paper around them. And then here's also the RR Racing, or I'm sorry, these are the stock lower control arm bushings. I have the RR Racing uh, Ultimate Steering Response System or the lower control arms, which I also enjoy and have put those on. So that's a review for another day. But a um, <clears throat> couple things that I guess I could say about the, you know, the ride is good. Um, it actually makes the car look, you know, even, looks very good. I like it. There are a lot of um, different suspension pieces that you can buy for your ISF. These are probably the cheapest one. Um, you know, just springs. I think I, uh, I think these were about $300 or so. New, you can probably find them used, but, um, you know, I just wanted new ones. So you, your range is going to be from the $300 for these springs all the way to, I want to say about $3,000 for, I believe it's RR Racing Penske setup, uh, full coilover setup. So you have that, that range that you can spend. I think the cheapest coilover set is about $1,000 from BC Racing. And uh, you got a couple of different options in between there. So um, if you just want your car lowered, more, you know, aesthetic reasons rather than performance, I would recommend these springs. I'd, I'd say they're a good buy. Um, things that you may want to know or you may, may find helpful are that there were actually two part numbers for these springs. Um, there's a part number for the 2008 to 2011 ISFs, and there's a different part number for the 2012 to 2014 ISFs. So if you are ordering them, make sure that you get the right part number for the ISF year that you have. And um, I haven't had any issues with these uh, springs in, in regards to any um, rubbing. You know, I've had three different uh, sets of tires on this car now. I had the stock Michelin Pilot Super Sports in 225, 40, 19 and in the front and 255, 35, 19 in the rear. No rub with these springs. Then I moved on to the Indy 500s, the ones that, uh, the tires that I still have now, but I went into 245, 35, 19 and 275, 30, 19. No rubbing on those. And now I have 255, 35, 19s and 285. 3019s in the Firestone Firehawk Indy 500s. No ribbing there on street canyons um, or any anywhere in there. I've gone full full turn left and right, in reverse and uh, forward. No rubbing. So if, uh, if you're worried about that issue, it's not. And also, um, you know, I think I think the front is lowered. I want to say an inch, maybe an inch and a half. I'd have to recheck those um, from from stock and. I can kind of show you how much um, clearance you're gonna get on the side here. Let's measure it real quick. You'll get about, oh, five and a half inches or so on the side. And then let's do, let's do the front middle here. Uh, you'll get about, yeah, five and a half, maybe five and three quarters inches on the front. So. As long as you're not driving too crazy, um, trying to go super steep driveways or um, embankments, then you'll be all right. I, you know, I have um, scraped the bottom because just not being careful, not taking something too steep or too fast or not at the right angle. But for 99.9% .9 of the driving that I've done on normal streets and everything, you know, I don't really have to think too hard about, oh, is my car too low? So really good, uh, really good um, springs. And I'd recommend them if you if you uh, have any questions, you know, put it down in the comments and let me know. And uh, hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed this video and found some uh, good information. So let me get a shot of the car again, one more time. See the look. I mean, the the tire really f fills up that wheel well, and uh, that's what I was going for. And I think the uh, I think the back is perfect in stock form so i'll leave that up to you whether you think you want to be lower or higher than that so uh hopefully you enjoyed this video learned something and found it useful and we'll be back on soon